Um, all right, so I put some thought into this episode. It's kind of a confessional. Um, while the world is in upheaval, I mean, here in the United States of America, the word uh, I would use to encapsulate what's happening right now is division. <clears throat> the word unity uh, is is being spoken by some, uh, and then in the same sentence, divide, divisive words are, are being uttered. Um, uh, there's just crazy things happening that, as I tend to say, things that have never happened happen all the time. Things that have never happened before are happening all the time. And in this case, it's not a good thing. There's, there's just division, division. And I used to live in the state of Kentucky and the state motto is I, something like united we stand, divided we fall. And the United States of America is more divided today than at any time in history, except maybe the Civil War, prior to the Civil War. It's a whole lot, a whole lot more people now and a whole lot more complex now. But, so, uh, I'm exploiting... Armenians. I'm exploiting Armenia? Am I exploiting the Armenian genocide? Uh, that may be the narrative uh, that my detractors uh, will, will adopt at some point. Because what I'm working on is all Armenia all the time. <laughs> uh, um, and, you know, a narrative that could be used to attack me is, you're not Armenian, you're just exploiting them for your own benefit, for your own, your own advantage, to get ahead, to make money on a movie or a project or something. Um, <laughs> That's an interesting take. But my life changed when I learned about the Armenian Genocide, when I learned about Sogolman Tellurian. Changed so much that I sacrificed everything. Well, not everything yet. Uh, and here's the confessional part. Well, first of all, before the confessional part, one thing I realized when I came to this story is that at some point when it gets to the certain point of development or production or, you know, when it, when it is exhibited, I realized that Armenians at the very least, Armenians 100% would unite behind this project. I can't think of a scenario where an Armenian would somehow be opposed to the telling of the Sogolman Tellurian story. Right? And so when that, when that thought occurred to me, when I realized that, um, it, it was, it was like this epiphany and it was like, a, it was like a spiritual moment. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Me, with the life story rights, as the representative of the Sogolman Tellurian estate, a non-Armenian, I, I, you know, I'm co-owner with an Armenian, so it's not that a non-Armenian owns it. I'm 50% owner, but it's a, it's, we both have final say. Basically, I have final say. We both have to agree 
and I have ultimate final say. The family determined it in the contract that I would have final say. So that was that was also a spiritual epiphany moment when when I was given this responsibility by the family, by the Silverman Tullerian family. And so, but the uh, the epiphany of of a, a group being united, it was this powerful feeling, like it's like a vision of the future, something that I believe is going to happen. That that every Armenian would and and that it's been my experience when I meet Armenians who uh, who learn what I'm working on <laughs> they just want me to they want to feed me they want to they just like I become a part of the family they, it, it, uh and and it's it's a humbling humbling experience and so I wanted to do this video now, um, partly for the newcomers, the, the, the numbers have been going up and, and some are probably saying, why is this guy sitting in his car, uh, you know, in the dark with this low production value in some videos and then other videos are, are nice, you know, you, you know, uh, or better, higher production value. Um, I'm working two, two jobs at super low budget movie with, they only had a tiny little bit of money for post-production. So I'm editing that during the day, um, kind of, you know, they, they're paying me in increments and I'm like, I'm not going to work on it until you pay me this. So I'm kind of in an interval right now where they owe me some money. So I'm holding off, you yeah, know, not really, I'm working on it, but then I work at night at a, a warehouse job, not making nearly what I should be making, but I, you know, in these circumstances with lockdown and Hollywood shutting down and me not working. Um, so, but I want to put a video up a day because that's how you gain followers. It's just, if you can, are consistent, it grows. And I'm looking at, we're at 300 plus, And I only started this like two months ago. It seemed like just yesterday we hit a hundred and it was a, a milestone. We're already at 300 and it just keeps ticking up. So let me take this moment to sh remind you, share, <laughs> Let me make sure I hit record. Did I even hit record? Okay. Yeah, sometimes I have this mental block. Okay, I did hit record. Uh, share this video. Subscribe. Click the notification bell. If you're a subscriber already and you haven't clicked the notification bell, it'll let you know when I post new videos. Even though I do it every day, you should just check back every day. But that will help the numbers go up, right? The numbers of views are going up along with subscriptions are going up. But if you want to help this channel, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Just watch all the videos. Even if you don't watch the whole thing, just hit watch and set it aside and let it play out, you know, because those numbers, you know, because there's a drop off. Some people start watching like, this isn't interesting and it drops off. But, you know, the, the more consistent the viewership is, watch the videos all the way to the end. All of these things help with the algorithm. It helps YouTube recommend my videos. And I get a notification. They're saying, congratulations, your views are up 100% in this period. You're doing something right. People are watching your videos more now. And every little statistic helps. So you that are my loyal followers, those are things you can do. And, and commenting, you know, liking, etc. all those things, you know. Um, but so for you newcomers, the reason I'm, some of my videos look like this, I'm just sitting in my car right after work is I need to post a video a day to be consistent. To, uh, uh, it's kind of like a journal for me. Um, uh, you're a fan base and everything that is huge started small, right? I have this huge vision of this thing. If all, if all Armenians rally behind this project it will get the attention of everyone else in the world, right? Right? It's just a built-in audience. And then when people see numbers, it attracts other people. It's just, you know, when there's a crowd over there, you're like, oh, what's going on? And you go and the crowd gets bigger, right? And so this, this is the beginning. Um, and you're a part of it. And I thank you. So here's the confession part that... <laughs> Okay, well, first of all, I'm not exploiting anything. I mean, the word exploit, exploitation has a pejorative connotation. It's not a bad thing. So yes, I am exploiting. In fact, it's a legal term. You know, I have the rights to exploit 
the life story of Sogolman Tellurian. Like, that's the legal terminology, right? So, um, when I started this project three plus years ago, I refinanced my house because I had research to do and I had to travel to archives around the world and my investor was paying for the travel, but I had to pay my bills while I was working on this. And then that money dried up, so I refinanced my house a second time and got a terrible rate. But I, I had to, to finish the research and to get the script written and to meet certain obligations and then right when I met all those obligations, got the script done, a, what I refer to as a global global Chernobyl struck the planet, the, uh, the virus and the lockdown and the economic fallout. So literally, I was penniless, still had a mortgage payment and a rent payment. Like I don't, we don't live in our house. We, we, we rented it out and then we live in another neighborhood and rent there. And I hadn't been able to pay my mortgage for, I mean, for a long time. And so, uh, just in December, a few weeks ago, um, we had to sell our house. And it was a very stressful time, especially because of a family. Um, and it's that's not a it's not a small decision, but the only way we could survive is to like either the bank was going to take it or we sell it. And so, uh, <laughs> and so uh, we'll see how much longer I have. But uh, I've given it all because it's worth it. And I thank you because good things are ahead. Share this video. Or don't. I just I just wanted to tell you, my loyal followers, I, I, I hesitated to be so vulnerable and transparent, but there are the Turkish trolls that saying, oh, you're getting paid by Armenia. I'm like, yeah, right. You got one investor that paid for research and paid for the translation, and that money's done. And he pays the legal bills because there's a lot of legal stuff that you have to do when you're owning an intellectual property and making, uh, et cetera. You know, a, a, an entertainment attorney is very expensive. I can't afford that, but my partner doesn't like having to pay it, but he... <laughs> Believes in the project. All right. I'm rambling now, but um, love you guys. I know that sounds funny, but uh, good things are coming, and you're going to hear all about them here. All right.